Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching X-Men 97 episode 7. So, after the events of Genosha, and after we learn that Ch Charles Xavier's death didn't actually take place, Rogue is on the a road of revenge as she decides to try and find Henry Gyrick and Bolivar Trask. All while she discovers General Ross, Captain America, and a couple of other characters who are trying to talk her out of basically being the exact kind of mutants that people are terrified of to begin with. While all the other X-Men are basically performing relief duties in Genosha, and it turns out that Bolivar Trask basically realized the horrible thing he, he was creating, and I wouldn't say he did some soul-searching, but at the very least, he's not as evil as someone like Mr. Sinister. So he at least informs the X-Men of what he's been doing, and he asks them to come visit him at a UN building behind a vending machine that has a secret passageway when you when you uh, put in coins for a diet soda. I'll admit, the way that he uh, tells the X-Men how to open, open the secret passageway is one of my favorite lines of the show. I actually enjoyed that a bit more than the occasional cameos from General Ross and Captain America, because I know that they, those cameos were mainly there to interest people who are more to act as Easter eggs for other Marvel Universe characters. The original cartoon did this too, but they really just come across as glorified cameos here. More interesting is Rogue's meeting with Gyrick and the whole team's meeting with Trask. Gyrick naturally thinks that there's nothing Rogue can do to threaten him when she just decides to absorb him to the point where he'd probably be nothing but uh, rotting skin and powdered bone, Nightcrawler decides to come in and try to prevent her from killing him and to help her mourn the right way for Gambit. Unfortunately, Gyrick is not as lucky, considering that while he is saved from Rogue killing him, it's Bastion who ends up killing him. Now, Bastion, for those who don't know, was a X-Men villain who, in the in the in one of the comic storylines, he actually ends up killing Charles Xavier, and Magneto was the one who killed him. In fact, the, one of the writers of the X-Men comics also wrote a storyline for X-Men uh, Destiny, where Bastion comes back and tries to attack San Francisco. It was not a very good game, but that's how I know who Bastion is. Point is, he's a big bad villain who's possibly on the same level as Mr. Sinister when it comes to intelligence, technology, and overall lack of moral direction. Other than, you know, being the bad kind. So, once the team happens to locate Trask, he seems to be going mad and even quoting J. Robert Oppenheimer. I mean, Ro Oppenheimer got the quote from someone else, too. But once Rogue drops him off a building, it's revealed that not only was another Sentinel being built, even stronger than the one in Genosha, but he was the exact Sentinel, a human Sentinel, so to speak. And he happens to mop the floor with the entire team until Cable shows up to, to, in order to at least uh, incapacitate him. Cyclops and Jean notice that, that Cable is actually Nathan Summers from the future, and it seems that the final three-parter is going to be the X-Men versus both Sinister and uh, Bastion. And, with one more surprise, Magneto turns out to still be alive. And Bastion takes sadistic pleasure in, in basically shaving him while listening to Purple People Eater. Yeah, a bit weird of a song to choose, but it fits because Bastion's purple, I guess. He, though he doesn't have one eye or one horn. I genuinely loved all of Rogue's moments in the episode. Was she really gets to go through grief and her road of revenge the way I'd expect Rogue to do so. A lot of the humor in the episode happens to fit, as in Morph's humor felt like it didn't get in the way of any of the emotional moments, and it actually was pretty clever when it comes to the jokes. And, as expected, the fight with the human sentinel is definitely a visually stunning curb stomp fight. Hopefully, the X-Men have all the help they can get for the final three episodes, which is a big three-parter. Hopefully, tolerance isn't extermination here. See you next time.